299,792,458 Does this number evoke any memories for you? Yes, you are right, it represents the velocity of light in a vacuum. We know that no object can reach this velocity, because doing so would render some of our physics ridiculous. We also know that there will come a day when mankind will have to become both an interplanetary and an interstellar species. So, in order to optimize our space journey, we'll need to figure out if it's possible to reach that maximum velocity value. However, as Einstein taught us, when we reach such speeds, we must contend with some strange relativistic phenomena. Also, if we were to go and settle on another star's planet, we would need to design a starship with certain unique traits. It's been dubbed the Generation Ship by others. Follow me on this adventure to learn more about the Generation Ship and relativistic time dilation. If there is one thing we can be certain of, it is that we cannot travel at the speed of light, where velocity is greater than c. Even if humans could travel at very high speeds, a voyage to other stars would take hundreds, if not thousands, of years from the perspective of an observer on Earth. We would have to solve some technical challenges before we could begin to realize interstellar travel. However, the continual presence of a human crew on a spaceship may not be the most serious issue. We've seen a lot of inventive ideas in science fiction that try to avoid the long-term time constraint of space travel, particularly interstellar travel, such as hibernation and suspended animation. By the way, passengers, you can watch Space Odyssey. Suspended animation is defined as the halting of life processes by exogenous or endogenous sources without the death of life itself. Breathing, heartbeat, and other involuntary functions may still exist, but only through artificial means. In endotherms, hibernation is a condition of low activity and metabolic depression. Hibernation is a seasonal heterothermy distinguished by low body temperature, sluggish breathing and heart rate, and low metabolic rate. It is especially common during the winter months. However, it is unclear whether this state might be generated by humans, we are unsure how this would function in practice. One of the so-called generational ships is a more plausible option, a generation ship, sometimes known as a generation starship, is an interstellar arc starship that travels at sublight speed. The concept of a generation spaceship is an excellent example of how science and fiction interact. Many of the space scientists and engineers who contributed to the generation starship concept were also science fiction writers. A ship of this size would have to be completely self-sufficient, providing electricity, food, air, and water for everyone on board. It must also have extremely reliable systems that can be maintained by the ship's inhabitants for extended periods of time. This would necessitate evaluating thousands of humans' ability to survive on their own before placing them beyond the reach of rescue. Because such a spacecraft may take hundreds to thousands of years to reach even nearby stars, the original occupants of a generation ship would grow old and die, leaving their descendants to continue the journey. A spacecraft must be large enough to support a human community, and a fully recycling ecology in order to maintain a stable environment for numerous generations. However, such a large spacecraft would require a lot of energy to accelerate and descend. A smaller spacecraft, while being able to accelerate more readily and so allowing for higher cruise velocities, would lessen exposure to cosmic radiation and the time for malfunctions to develop in the craft, but would have issues with resource metabolic flux and ecological balance. There are even ethical considerations with a hypothetical generation ship. A generation ship's success is dependent on children born aboard taking up vital jobs and producing children themselves. Even if their quality of life is superior to that of persons born into poverty on Earth, the question of whether it is ethical to severely limit individuals' life choices by locking them into a project they did not choose arises. There is a moral conundrum over how intermediate generations, those who will be born and die en route without experiencing the physical rewards of their work, will feel about their forced life on such a ship. So the ones who arrive at the destination will not be the ones who left Earth, but their descendants. It would be a difficult task, but it could become a reality in the future. 
If humans colonized other star systems, this will most likely be the most likely one. And we must be assured that the journey will be successful and that we will be able to create a colony on another planet. Let us now set aside any technological concerns and assume that we can construct such a ship. Assume that this generation ship has an acceleration of 981 ms2, the value of the Earth's gravitational acceleration. What happens to those who are in a spaceship at this speed? We would feel pushed to the back seat in a car, as if there is a force pushing us. But Einstein showed us that being in an accelerated system is the same as being in a non-accelerated system with gravity. So, if we are in a system that accelerates with g-acceleration, we experience what we would experience in the gravitational field of the Earth. We would have an Earth gravitational field for the length of the voyage if the spaceship always accelerated with g-acceleration. However, this would not be the only intriguing aspect. 1G acceleration can be attained quite rapidly and simply. If you could maintain this acceleration, you would approach 70% of the speed of light in slightly over a year and travel nearly half a light year. If we kept going in this direction, we'd grow closer and closer to sea. We should break before reaching our destination, but we could accomplish it by reversing the thrust in the middle of the journey and decelerating steadily at 1G. Then we'd have a gravitational field for the duration of our journey. But how long would the journey be? From the perspective of those on Earth, the starship would take many years to approach the nearest stars. However, relativistic effects must be considered for the spaceship's occupants, because of temporal dilation, time flows differently, according to Einstein. As a result, the travel would take substantially less time from the perspective of the crew. The journey would take around three and a half years to reach Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri is 4.2 light years away, but the astronauts will have traveled in less than 4.2 years. Still, if the ship pointed to Vega at 27 light years, the astronauts would be there for around six and a half years. And if it pointed towards the center of our galaxy at roughly 30,000 light years, the journey would take tens of thousands of years for those on Earth, but only 20 years for those on board. If the astronauts directed the spaceship toward the Andromeda galaxy, which is 2 million light years away, they would arrive in only 28 years. The crew's continual acceleration would not require many generations to flip the universe, the period required would be fairly short after all. If they choose to return, they would discover that the Earth had altered over hundreds or thousands of years, therefore, it would be a journey with no return. It is evident that we are discussing a theoretical rather than a practical matter, as humanity will be unable to deal with all of this in a few decades. However, if we expand our technical capabilities, our descendants will one day face all of this, as well as the occurrence of time dilation. But what exactly is time dilation? Time dilation is the slowing down of a clock as determined by an observer in relative motion with respect to that clock under the theory of special relativity. An observer in inertial, i.e., non-accelerating, motion has a well-defined way of distinguishing which events occur simultaneously with a particular event in special relativity. However, a second inertial observer in relative motion with respect to the first will disagree with the first observer about which occurrences are synchronous with that particular event. Neither observer is incorrect, rather, their disagreement reflects the fact that simultaneity is an observer-dependent concept in special relativity. To compare the rates of clocks carried by the two observers, a concept of simultaneity is required. Using the first observer's notion of simultaneity, it is discovered that the second observer's clock runs slower than the first observer's by a factor of square root of 1 v 2 c 2, where v is the relative velocity of the observers and c equals 299,792 kilometers, or 186,282 miles per second the speed of light. Similarly, the first observer's clock runs slower by the same factor when utilizing the second observer's idea of simultaneity. As a result, each inertial observer concludes that all clocks moving relative to that observer run slower than the observer's own clock. The so-called twin paradox is a similarly related event predicted by special relativity. Assume one of two twins carrying a clock departs on a rocket ship from the other twin, an inertial observer, at a specific time and returns later. Following the time dilation effect, 
the twin on the rocket ship's elapsed time on the clock will be less than that of the inertial observer twin that is, the non-inertial twin will have aged less than the inertial observer twin when they rejoin. Observations of the enhanced lifetime of unstable elementary particles traveling at almost the speed of light have accurately validated the time dilation effect predicted by special relativity. Experiments comparing the elapsed time of an atomic clock on Earth with that of an atomic clock traveling in an airliner have also validated the clock paradox effect. Furthermore, the latter investigations have proved a gravitational contribution to time dilation as predicted by general relativity theory. All right everyone here is where the video ends, thanks for watching. What were your thoughts about generation ship? Did you find this information to be useful? Were you astounded by time dilation? Is there anything else you'd like to know about life on other planets? Please let me know in the comments below, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the channel.